as spring migration continues in Missouri, I've been trying to get out more to photograph many different species of animals, and I've been consistently going to Eagle Bluffs Conservation Area near Columbia, Missouri, where I found this raccoon and this striped skunk. Uh, tried to get a better picture of it, but boy, he played hide and seek. And, uh, you know, all the birds are pairing up. Here we have a wood duck pair. Uh, they're nesting quite a bit. I'm expecting young wood ducks soon. Uh, coincidentally, that raccoon that I took a photo of, he's actually living in a wood duck box. I was out one day, and I got to witness a bald eagle uh, drop this duck right here. Uh, and uh, she's fine. So uh, he did not come back to finish the job, and he kind of hangs his head in shame. But it was a pretty good week for seeing some new stuff that I didn't get to see all winter long, like this red-breasted merganser. Uh, I was only there for a few moments. Of course, my all-time favorite pie, Bill Greed. Uh, great blue herons are plenty all year long. Uh, my American mink friend stopped by. We found out she's a mother of five. We still have the shorebirds. And there's a greater yellow leg and a lesser yellow leg. And I got another opportunity with the Hudsonian godwit, and I got a much better photograph this time, so I was very happy with that. And then one day, the white-faced ibises came back, and they came back in a large group. This is the largest group I've ever seen at Eagle Bluffs Conservation Area, and uh, they were pretty far away. And the next day, I found a solo guy, and he's eating snails right now. At least I think they're snails. This was a very overcast day, so he's not showing off those colors, and I didn't want to alter this video. I liked it just the way it was, because uh, that contrast really lets you see him. Uh, toss those snails and swallow them with that awkward shaped bill. Here he catches a large tadpole, probably a leopard frog tadpole, but could be a bullfrog tadpole, and he ditches that. Uh, everything that I saw them get that was bigger than, you know, snail size, I watched them ditch, whether it was crawdads or fish or tadpoles. And this is the photo that I chose with the water droplets. He was soon joined by another one, and uh, after a while, they were joined by, you know, another 15 or so white-faced ibises, and a bunch of great egrets came in, and uh, of course they were surrounded by, you know, blue-winged teals and, and shorebirds, a lot of uh, lesser yellow legs, a lot of sandpipers, and uh, it's fun. I always enjoy watching the, the great egrets eat. I always try to get that photograph when the food is in midair. Uh, that's neat. Or the, the plunge. Uh, this was such an overcast day that, you know, I didn't quite have the shutter speed I wanted, so I just settled for video. And uh, that, t that turned out pretty good because I got some nice video of fish flopping around. And uh, they seemed to play with their food. And, you know, I apologize for this if it's upsetting to you, but here's a, a large uh, leopard frog. And uh, he put up quite a fight. And then I got a photograph of eye contact. And, of course, the wood warblers are back. I'm not 100% sure what that is. I think it's a Bell's Vireo. Uh, this one I'm 100% sure of is the Palm Warbler. Uh, that's a fun one, low to the ground usually, and uh, easy to get a photo of. And then my personal favorite warbler is the Yellow Warbler. I love the red uh, flame stripes on their chest. And uh, they have got a pretty song, but they're very uh, hyperactive and a lot higher in the trees and, and kind of difficult to get a really good shot of at least for me and I would recommend for warblers to be shooting at least one two thousandth of a second on your camera if you have that capability and if you can go even faster than that then you're gonna want to go up to one four thousand or one five thousandth of a second for swallows and I had a blast with these you can see the bug he was intently aiming at and then he grabs it here he's got it in his mouth that's a tree swallow those are difficult photos to get, but a lot of fun trying. And this northern water snake, he was hanging up out about uh, three feet in the air in a tree that all the warblers were landing in and all the swallows were landing in. And that made me suspect that maybe northern water snakes don't only eat fish and frogs. Maybe he was trying to grab a little bird. Because it wasn't a warm day. He wasn't uh, up there basking. This common snapping turtle was in a very tiny pool of water in the rain and uh, really absorbed all my attention to the point that I didn't even notice he was approaching a female. Oh, it is spring for everybody. No matter how ugly you are, uh, there's somebody for you. That was the lesson I learned here. What a dinosaur.
Man, that's cool. And then I found a Sora, little robin-sized rail that I like to call a water chicken. And these guys are incredibly secretive. They like to hang out in the reeds in the shallow water. Uh, they're easy to locate because of the loud song, but uh, and the very unique song too. But uh, locating them and actually finding them to get a photo are two different things. And this is the first time I've ever seen two together, which was pretty neat. Uh, last year I did a pretty good job getting Sora pictures, but this year just blew it away. I was able to get so close and creep up. And, you know, I was at the focus uh, limit, the near focus limit of my camera. And, you know, that's <laughs> quite the opportunity. And when I'm telling you I got close, I mean, I, we're talking about 15 feet, see? And that's it. Thank you very much. Please like and subscribe and let me know what you think of the videos. Thank you.